Thank you. Okay. I think it's time for we started. Okay, hi guys. How's your summit? Great. Good. Uh, I'm uh, Rico Lane, and uh, I'm the chief OpenStack technologist in from the uh, InwinStack. Uh, for those guys who didn't know who InwinStack are, we are the uh, service pro uh, consultant provider from uh, basic from Taiwan. And we just got our uh, gold membership uh, yeah, like last day. So yeah, congrats. <laughs> yeah. So uh, today's topic is about heat up your steak. So I try to con I will tr in this session I will try to convince you guys that you should use heat to uh, orchestrate your steak. And you probably will tell me that you already have your heat running and running well, a service to up, but are you really using it? Okay, I guess nobody. <laughs> yeah, but that's a problem here because heat is designed for manage your cloud there, but you should uh, know how to use it as a no matter what operators or uh, developers. Okay, so we will start by point out the question here, point out the problem here, and uh, first I will I would like to show you this is like the normal uh, OpenStack architectures for you guys, right? The compute node, control nodes, and storage nodes, sometimes uh, network node, well, depends. And there will be a high available tools like keep a light pacemaker on top to make you this uh, hard, uh, like hardware plane architectures. And then you have the open stack on top. Oh, this is a service on, of open stack on top. Well, it's uh, very complicated, and uh, the service is uh, a lot of functions there. And this is a resource on top. Well, it's a lot. You create a resource for all kinds of purpose here, uh, for all uh, different users here. And it's a mess. It's a totally mess. And you, you were thinking about it creative for all kinds of reasons there. But you not really manage it. And why? Because your resource here is like a sleepy puppy. So <laughs> yeah, it's cute. I, love, I like puppy. I really like puppy, <laughs> just for note. And the resource like uh, because it is sleeping, it stay there. Your instance, your resource is staying there, but you don't know why. Like you, you, you always, you always thinking that oh, okay, that instance may be created by somebody else, but everybody think of that. So they probably will have an instance called like a, a, a server. This one, this one there, and everybody think okay, it's running, it's running well, but nobody know wh wh what it's doing. So. Your resource should look like this, okay? It's a, uh, it's not scaring at all, and uh, it's a uh, you should you should uh, your resource should like a fleet, like a team. They know the dependency with each others. They knows what they can do with each others, and they are going to help each others. So, this is uh, all about making you, uh, make your cloud decision fast, and right. So making it fast and making it right, that's the point, right? So uh, we were talking about where uh, heat can can in. So first, uh, to in order to uh, find a red line, oh, I'm not sure. Uh, the there's a red line between the dogs. If you guys see it, <laughs> finding the red lines there for your resource. So you must know first what is the red lines. So what is uh, each other? What I what is uh, each resource doing? So heat provides a lot of resource uh, list there. Uh, we really try hard. Well. Uh, the heat team will try hard to make it happen there. So uh, most of your resource in your OpenStack cloud, you can find it like flavors, rows, alarms. So everything will have a heat resource there. And it is uh, a lot of function there. So we will explain later. So redefine your own resources to the heat resources. That's the first step. So the sleepy puppy will become a big dog. So the first step. Okay, the first step is uh, to create a stake. So we were talking about finding the red lines here. So first step is create your stack for your default resources. So what is default resources? The default resource is for those resources. You just feeling it. It will be good. It will be nice to be there, uh, like like the flavor, medium, large kind of stuff, and not only for the global environments. Okay. The default resource also point for those uh, project or for each users. For example, if you are a user, you, you are go always going to using the images, 
maybe uh, some cross images there. That, that is the, exactly the default resource you should put into your stack first. So the stack is going to make sure that your resource always there and is running. So you should uh, organize it then to uh, become a stack here. So that's what the heat would promise to make you happen. So that's the default resources. Then there's more red lines here, okay? There's also the authorization and authentications. So most of the uh, of users, they're really just uh, making the uh, authorization and authentication by default, right? You guys probably have the role for uh, the mains and the members, and that's all. <laughs> it should not be this way. So the if, if you're really running your OpenStack Cloud, the authorization and authentication will be much more complicated. And when you reach that complicated point, you really need to organize your resource on a hit stake. Because hit stake will make sure you can understand all the dependencies, all the uh, topologies of your entire resource layer. So we are talking about authorization and authentications because it is the, the basic uh, securities for your clouds. Because you, you create the authorizations for uh, for make your users can operate it, and you create authentication to make and can log into the project. So whatever whatever the user can do, it, it, it you give into them. So give it keep in mind. And another is uh, your network topologies here. So uh, I I met a lot of operators, but they're not really using the uh, heat kind of uh, ways to manage their network topologies. So their network topology is totally mess. So if I crap, if I, uh, if I uh, pull down your network, I, to I, tr I return back uh, network subnet, can you find it? No, because you, you didn't even know where the map go wrong. So uh, there's a network always a very complicated stuff. So if you're using stack here, you will just have a very clear version of the entire map. And even more, you can uh, re you can uh, rebuild it if it's, if it's wrong. And even let's even go further, there's an uh, instance. So why instance need to be in the stack? Because instance is very complicated, even just for the instance, the server itself. So instance got a, a bunch, like a tens of hundreds uh, 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 parameters layer. So whatever goes wrong, you'll probably know it uh, when, is when the instance is crashed. So that is the point of the entire uh, stake, your resource thing, because uh, instance do matters because your application is on top. So care for your, for, uh, be careful for your applications, so make sure that you have an instance map layer. So if everything went right, you probably have a, a, a lot of resource uh, built on the stakes. And uh, so I, I, I'm pretty sure most of the use cases is just like uh, those, those uh, example layers, right? Oh, somebody knock their head, thank you. So uh, there will be a lot of resources, so don't worry, no, there will be missed point. So why is it a, what is the advantage for us? What is good for us? That you can reduce your opera uh, operations, that's the first step. And for example, if we create a stake here, you probably uh, cost like eight. Of course, Horizon did, did, did a lot of uh, 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 easy weight for you, but we were talking about managing your cloud there, so you probably won't just have the horizon to running to build your instances. Well, developer, a lot of developer developers don't use horizon at all. So, uh, is it, is it, it would be better if they had ways to manage the resources, so the applications were reduced, and the more operations you give, the more mistake you will get, you will take you will get, you will make, yeah. And see how many operations here to build this uh, drop list structure. Of course, you not build it at one time. Of course, nobody do that. But from time to time, from user to users, you have a bunch of users. You are uh, running a cloud for your uh, for your uh, uh, companies there. So somebody will do the wrong decision. Somebody will make the wrong resources. So you need to have the abilities to find it out. 
and uh, there's uh, more advantages for the stake stake lights or rep things. The migrations. Okay, the migration do happens no matter what. We're not just talking about the uh, uh, big migrations for your entire open stack. We're talking about maybe a small migration. Like you have uh, maybe a user is not there anymore. He's uh, relegated, and uh, those resources he created need to be uh, pulled back or need to be uh, transferred to others. And how are you going to do that? So if you're using the stake, you just have to withdraw the resources just by deleting the stake. It's simple, it's clear. So no zombie resources there. Everybody's happy. Because zombie resources really kill your management cost. It is a lot of management cost there. For If you have like zombie resources there, you are uh, maybe probably you have a lot of uh, space for those zombies, but eventually the zombies uh, will crush you down if the cloud if the cloud went wrong once they crush you down. And the we are talking about relegated, so the resource can be transferred if you are using the stakes here. Now the stakes here ha can have make sure in general can make sure you have the same s uh, resource spec resource structure in from uh, by another way by another users there or by the same users no matter what so it just by the uh, writing the correct template there it will make sure the entire resource is there is a uh, totally another fleet another teams running up so uh, the new new users will you will be very happy there so uh, the stake itself can be uh, can be uh, see a lot of uh, resource uh, topology like this on the on the horizon there. So you can very easily to see what the lines between were uh, very really very easy. And the it has the event and the logs for your resource there. So whatever went wrong to your resource, you don't necessarily to go to the servers and grab the log and wish you good luck. That no, not ne not necessary. So. Now you can just, if you're using the horizon, you can just say very clear what something went wrong, which resource went wrong, and you can just rewrite the template, and it will help you to replace the entire resource map layer. So you won't need to uh, withdraw a bit, a point of resource back, and create the whole thing together. And stake is updatable. When I say updatable, means that if you have a stake running and maybe went wrong or something, you would like to wish to replace part of the stake. You won't necessarily to uh, withdraw entire stake and put it back. You just have to uh, uh, fix or modify part of your uh, stake template, and it will very easy to help you to replace the resource layer. So I think it's very, uh, I think it's very, very fascinating. And we're talking about uh, some functions you can write in your uh, templates here. Uh, one of them is get file. So w uh, we're trying to uh, write those templates for your sticks, right? And we want to make sure it is clean. It's very clean. So a lot of a script, like a configuration script, we should uh, put it in the, uh, like using a get file, put it in another files there. and. In the in this way, you just import the file there, and it's really simple. You uh, you can try it. It's a really simple ways. It will work or it totally work. And uh, the best part is you will, you will have a very clean like a flow control uh, map for your resource here. So uh, you have a really great structure now. You have a really uh, clean template now. So everybody's happy. And depends on the depends on is a. A resource to make sure the the dependencies there. So we have a lot of uh, uh, users uh, have a question about how to make sure the dependency of each resource. We're talking about make make land in the same topologies, right? So the dependencies matters. So you can decide the dependency for each other. So for example, you want the, the instance one create uh, the first one and the, the instance two the second one. Well, you can down. You can uh, get it done by this way. So, just set the dependency on, and uh, don't worry at all about what what we're running in the back. The heat will totally uh, handle it for you. It works. And the get resource and the get attributes here is uh 
it will read another resource in your uh, in your stack topologies there, and it will uh, refer reference by the other resource here. So you can just uh, maybe get a single attributes from another resource here. So it's very handy use because right now you can, for example, you will create uh, like one instance there. You can get the uh, the attributes inside and put it to the in another input for another resource here. Uh, yeah, li uh, maybe uh, this is a little uh, uh, tricky. So this is uh, it like the depends on, but it is implicit depends on. So if you set it that way, it will also depends on the other resources here. So yeah, the dependency will be fine. And again, your, your resource now can be a very uh, complicated structure here. Because it, now you can you can have the, for example, you can have the instance resource on the same template and the instance resource on the same template here. So every every resource you need it, you just have to create it when you when you want to use it. So simple. And another is a nested stake. So nested stake is a very interesting idea here because I. I think uh, a lot of we're talking about to make sure you have a very easy uh, templates, right? I, I mean, not easy, but very uh, clean flow, uh, the controlling flow of the template. So you really can just uh, import another template, import another uh, stakes there. So uh, it's more recommended to have like a nested stake here. For example, you have a lot of resources just for one instance. And now you can just like the get file way, you can just pull it out and put it in another, another stake layer. And when you want to use it, you can just like the uh, reference the resource there. You can just uh, uh, reference it in this uh, stake. Just make sure the, the YAML file is there and everything will work. It, uh, and and uh, the nest the best part of nested nested stake is uh, the management of nested stake nested stake is very easy, so uh, it's just like a reference another resource there. So, so we talk uh, talk about how to manage your uh, current uh, resource in your or old open stake, right? And uh, the resource on your or open stake can be replaced by the heat resources, which which is still, still, is your own resource there, okay? So nothing changed for you guys, just you create a topology map on top. That way, just like what we show for uh, Horizon, you can clearly see the dependencies, the topologies there, you can clearly see what's went wrong, it's very easy for you to manage it. Now your cloud is manageable. That's the cloud, that's what cloud built for. So, we're now talking about a lot of uh, infrastructure layer, and what about the applications on top? Now, the applications on top, like what we show in the uh, in the instance, they probably will have a uh, Murano, and it's running. I, I love Murano; it's very fancy. But uh, but we will I will try to talking about the using heat directly to uh, configure your uh, uh, your applications here. So. Hit has a resource like software config and software deploy. You can uh, control your resource here. And uh, for hit, you just uh, have to uh, write the software config here. And it probably will be an Ansible script. And in that Ansible script, uh, you can just use the get file to import it here and say, hey, this is the Ansible script here. Don't make it wrong. And in, the, in your server, server is an instance. For just for note, uh, in your server layer, you can just uh, write there is a software config on the, on the format, and that's it. So uh, the third resource and the final resource here is a software deploy, and the software deploy is like a bridge to your config and to your uh, service there. So uh, from the from the software config, you have a, t a controller. Like for example, this for example is the Ansible. Right, and you can make the Ansible script running on top of your server layer, your instance there, and I will I will show the details there how you work, just for for letting you guys know that there's a way to make the applications on top of heat, so you don't really necessary to uh, 
maybe uh, do a write another new resource for for heat. You can just using the uh, software deploy and config for your applications. And it is a uh, it's very cool. And for example, the Ceph. Now I I used to trying to write a resource for Ceph and hope the heat team will accept it, but unfortunately it can be accepted. But why? Because we have a software config and software deploy layer, and it's really handy to use. So you can just uh, you can just have the save and suppose script. Uh, ju I just pull from the uh, repository, and it work totally work. Blame me. Uh, from the repository directly, and the controller script you can just put in in the software config. Okay, and for the rest of the library script, you put it in the in the in your instance there. So when you trying to uh using the software deploy ways there, the software deploy will will bring the software config to your server and say, Hey, this is your uh software config. It, it, it is a safe deploy script inside and uh I give you a parameter here, your role is uh is safe monitor here. So knock yourself out. And that instance there will totally know what we are talking about because we have some uh, hook on top. I will talk about it later. And then uh, it works. So uh, your save is also already inside and your save will be running and you can like trigger like 10 instance there. We were talking about a uh, nested state. So you can trigger 10 instance there and make sure that, oh, this guy is always the, this guy is save monitor. And he's, cr he's a, uh, I, I don't know what he's doing, but he's a web server, maybe. So you can totally work everything together, what you want and what you wish. That is your application topologies. So that is a, from his best uh, perspective, it is a very easy, uh, very uh, clear version of your uh, applications. So uh, whatever in by uh, create by hit is a, a clear topologies here. That's a very big ad advantage, and the use case it can be a uh, more a lot of ways here. So not just the save. There's a currently a lot of uh, deploy script outside, right? You probably have writing your own. A lot of developer has their own deploy script by Ansible, by Puppet, by Shift. So whatever you want, whatever like there's a lot of uh, a hook there, like uh, the sold script. Maybe just only the script can work too. So you even can writing your own hooks there. And it's very easy. Just just a few lines there. Just call him to like a Ansible uh, playbook. So it's a, it's a very very easy way to write it your hook. So what we're talking about to uh, make it fast and make it right. So if we have this kind of stake here, you probably will have. If you don't have it, you probably will have the create an instance, and then you config your script on top. And maybe something went wrong. I mean, this is really a manu uh, manually configuration there. So, if one of the instances went wrong, you probably will have the entire Ceph cluster just crash there, because you don't know which which instance went wrong there. You probably grab log and uh, wish you luck. Uh, that's a very pain pain point here. So right now there will be uh, only one operations here. Uh, if something went wrong here, you can clearly see it. In from the heat stake, and we were talking about the software config and software deploy here. But how you work? Let's uh, give it a little, a little diving here, shall we? So, the f uh, we're talking about make the configurations to uh, and using the deploy to put it in your uh, servers. Now, if the ser we have the some some tools on top of the server, of course, uh, it will which is a uh, Directly uh, created in your images, so like always collect, uh, collect config, uh, refresh config, and uh, the apply config. Flows is created by the Triple project, and uh, the, the Triple is using it, so uh, it's it's a very stable tools, and the always collect config is like a, a agent there. It will pull it will pull back the uh, metadata. From your Nova metadata server, and it will 
it will call the refresh config to make sure your, configura your configuration deployment uh, on a specific order. And the refresh config will call the apply config here. And the apply config will replace those, uh, those so-called, we, we have right in the control flow in, the, in your, for example, the Ansible configurations, right? And the Ansible script layer will have a lot of uh, different uh, uh, like uh, coding there, like coding the library, coding others, and that's why the apply config will help you to replace those uh, those terms into the really run, uh, executable uh, script uh, control uh, controlling script, and the refresh config will keep calling the uh, heat config, and the heat config will see we have a writing the group right in your software config. Now the heat config will read that group parameters. For example, the Ansible. So he will trigger the Ansible hook. And the Ansible hook will trigger the Ansible playbook, which is just a command line here, very easy. So we are talking about a hook and, and an Ansible play playbook here. So the, the hook is very easy, just trigger the, configure, uh, trigger the Ansible playbook. Everybody can write it, right? And then the Ansible playbook will will execute the Ansible files, which include, include those uh, Ansible script you, you, you put in the images here. And now, if everything running correctly, the hit config and, uh, will tell the a hit is uh, always in everything is ready, and it will give you even give you some output of your resource here and uh, tell you that everything is working, and you see here is the output, it's success, Happy. Excuse me. So we are talking about the convergence here. Yeah. Now the convergence here is a very fascinating idea. It it really came from users. The convergence is because the clouds are noisy. Uh, every convergence document style in this line here. Cloud are noisy. But cloud are noisy because you have a lot of servers goes and run, uh, goes and back, and uh, maybe by the power failure ways uh, reason. So uh, it sh really should make we really should make the uh, stake process more uh, more handy to use and more uh, stable for every users there for every stake from a small size stake for a big size stake. So. Uh, we were trying to make sure that those stake can running uh, concurrently, right? We we talking about you using the stake to uh, manage your entire cloud here. So, I what if you can you can running concurrently? I mean, you can have the ten stake. They are going to run together, and uh, they won't they won't be a problem at all. And uh, everybody will run very fast and go grab it fa back fast. You will know your resources success there. So, you we want to trigger a convergence here. So you can just uh, write this convergence agent engine in your configuration heat configuration file and restart your heat service, and it will it will start to be a convergence way. Now the convergence here, uh, we in order to compare with the old, we would like to uh, write the old low old workflow here. Low. So this is the old original workflow. The original workflow will be a template will, will push to the heat API here and by the maybe by the state create API call. And the heat API will uh, using the NQPs to call to send it to the heat agent and heat agents will handle the entire stake and make sure the, the uh, database has the stake uh, data and the uh, it will tell, tell back to your users that your stake is ready. That's what we're talking about originally. But now the conversion is up and is running, is under the beta release now. Uh, uh, and the, the, the ideal design of the convergence here is that uh, you go to the, your heat engine. Now your heat engines will tell your, uh, there will be workers here and the uh, observers here. Now you will tell the workers, "Hey, this is one resource in my in my stake. You, you go to create it and tell me if it's ready." And the workers will will handle the creation part, and then it will uh, 
ask the other servers to uh to see if the the resource is on the correct I mean really correct status, right? Make sure it's really running, not just sending an API there and uh, wish you good luck. No, we don't want that. So the observer, if if you make sure it's right, the engine will the engine will eventually know it. Now the entire stack it will be running. So whatever the resource goes, the resource will be created, right? So that's the ideal design for the convergence. But the we have mentioned the convergence is still under the beta release here. So that means that we have a little part here uh, is still under developing, under implemented. But it's, it's still really working right now because we already implemented workers here. But we didn't have the upper server here, so the workers don't know who the upper server is. But uh, also another difference here is that uh, current design that uh, we put the entire stack to one workers to let the workers do the entire stack creation. Well, there's a good, there's a pros and cons here, but I, I think this also work here because one workers can handle the entire stack and he can really handle it fa very fastly. So we, we don't uh, have to deal with a lot of network issues here. So that's the current design. So how the convergence worker interact with each other? We're talking about making it concurrently, right? And how you interact? There we have the uh, traversal graph. Now the traversal graphic here will have the same point for each resource. And inside the same points, there will be a traversal ID, which is the traversal for this creation process. And it's a render UID here. And the stake ID is for the stake, uh, no, the stake for the resource on top. And the entity ID is for the resources. So the resources will have an entity ID to make sure it is identical. And uh, in the in your uh, traversal graph here, you will have the lines here to make sure the dependency is working. So the lines here is about required and required. So you you can see which resource is required by others. So no, no. If the resource are required by nobody, the resource will be the leave resource, and the leave resource makes uh, just the first, first level resource that makes makes you can uh, easily create it, and uh, don't don't need to worry about the dependencies because it's on top. So, in order to make sure you guys know about the really convergences, let's trace a little bit, shall we? Ah, this guy just keep nodding his head. Thank you, love you, man. <laughs> really love you. <laughs> and the, now we trace it. And the template go to the heat API, right? We'll talk about it. They go to using the NQP API codes to uh, go to the trigger the heat engines. Now the heat engines will have the uh, like the original ways that, but there will be a uh, triggers for convergence. So it will check if you have enabled the convergence engines. Uh, configurations. If you you and you will trigger it, it will start by a totally different process here and create your convergence stake. Now the heat engine knows it. It first will clean up your uh, traversal graphic in your database. Why? Because you probably have the stake already running in, and uh, it used to be running and it's finished, right? You may be doing the stake update here. So you will make sure that. Your current traversal graph is the newest one. You're not using the old traversal graph, so make sure that you have the correct traversal ID, correct resource graphic here. And uh, then it will create a new graphic for you, right? To see what kind of resource here in your stack template, and make sure you have the exactly the re re uh, re uh, re relative. Uh, a sync point map there, which are sure on the on top, and it will the heat engine now will send the MQP uh, the MQP code to the to the engine workers topic there, and who will receive it? The workers. Uh, uh, one of the workers will receive the the request there, and you will start to uh, looking at the traversal map in the database, and then you will find the leaves there. Now the leaves layer we were talking about that it can create it first, right? No pain point, no it should be created first, is what it leaves for. So it will 
it will create it first. So the first one, like this example, will be the uh, resource A. So resource A created, uh, uh, resource A uh, triggered, and uh, if the current traversal is correct with the stakes, you I mean we have talking about the traversal ID, right? It will make sure the current traversal of the stake is current, the same as current traversal for your resource. Make sure you are on the correct traversal here. No, no not other, not by the other workers there. So, A is A is uh, now is a trigger is loaded and trigger the process here. The first step will uh, check the if the update failed or check the lock. Check make sure you have the resource. You you have the lock. Make sure you can create it. Just for prevention, and then you can you can uh, check at the step six to uh, make sure the the action is create if the action is initial or not it, it will be update or others uh, yes and the uh, the step seven you will check you will trigger a schedule here and the schedule here will help you to uh, do the creation processes eight. You create, you you trigger or create handle create, which is for every resources there will be a handle create action there, and it will specific write and by for that resource, and then the handle create will be uh, triggered now, and uh, it will it will directly using the uh, Python library there, and uh, using the identity you give it, and running using the libraries to create a true resource here. Just like in this step, just like what you create your resources. Just we have a lot of steps there to make sure your your uh, me mechanism there is correct. So that's what he doing for you. So the A now is created in the in the database now. And it was and there's will be B will be the leaves here with we keep the step by to nine to the entire process here. And the step four will be load the next resource, right? So we will keep in doing it that way. And even more fascinating, we have talking about concurrence. So the stake now, I, uh, the workers now is very concurrently. So you can have another stake on the other workers here, and you won't you won't need to worry about the the, the block here. So no block point here. So out uh, if once workers is uh, busy, a lot of workers will rise up and uh, handle the state creation job for you. And we'll keep going there until everything's finished. And when it's finished, you will mark it as a completed and, and purge your database and uh, get rid of the uh, uh, resource on top, uh, get rid of, of the template resource on top. And so what if we conflict? We're talking about making it concurrently. But what if one of the resources, one of the stake is, con is a conflict with another? So now there's a two workers trying to uh, update the same the same stake, right? And uh, we we don't really need to worry about it because the stake itself will see the traversals, and the traversal we have talking about is a random UID for each each traversal action there. So if you not get the correct traversal ID here, means that another another stake here is doing the creation or other actions there and you won't uh, workers won't get any longer so won't get act actions won't, won't get keep actions so not a problem for concurrency so we t have talked about making it fast and making it correct so what about there's a you have a mass application deploy now i mean everybody should have mass applications on top of your open stake right Unless you're just trying to uh, demonstrate, you're just trying to have a little operation, a uh, little open stake layer and making fun. So no, you have uh, applications on top. Of course, that's what you care. So now you can have a lot of operations. Like maybe like if uh, 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 fifty is uh, also a small. I must say it's also a small application deploy. It is. So you can reduce fifty to one operations. And we're talking about making it fast, so we can reduce from one hundred minutes one one hundred minutes to less than twenties. That is just uh, for a basic conf uh, setting here. For uh, I have tried it; it's uh, really fascinating because you have the nasty stack layer, right? So all your resources will go concurrently. So it's cool, okay? 
So I guess I'm running out of time, and uh, this is the other hit session here. And we also have the user and operation session of the Design Summit will come to join us, and we'll have a talk more later. So let's go to the questions. Any question? Yes? Oh, sorry, here is your microphone. Excuse me. Uh, it's not. <laughs> ah, the map. Oh, actually, less the <laughs> less the <laughs> timer from for myself for myself. Okay, may maybe you can just ask and I'll repeat it. Uh, regarding the convergence, you're talking about uh, like uh, check the sac uh, resource status. So how exactly? Will it come to know the resource status is completed? Is it some signaling between uh, the resource and the heat engine from the instance itself? Uh, pardon me? I, did, I did not get it. Uh, the resource. Yes. Uh, yeah? So what kind of signaling is it? The heat signaling, what you're talking about, like in software deployment, we have a heat signaling. Is it that way? Uh, I didn't get it. <laughs> uh, the s s status of a resource. Yes, the resource. Uh, the status is complete or not in uh, yeah, the concurrent, yes. So how does it get the status that the resource is finished? Let's say I'm running a script. Oh, you mean get the data? Yeah. OK, uh, yeah, maybe there's a missing point here. The resource you're running will have the output for in your stake. Now, the output in your stake will, will make sure that you make sure that you, have, uh, you can print some output for your resource here. If you, you want to customize this, see what the resource is doing now. So if you you don't you, uh, the resource of course will be you will see it completed on the map layer you will see the resource is uh, correct you you will see it by the horizon layer you will see the green uh, button there that means the resource is created that's the status and we're talking about the uh, resource maybe uh, you need uh, some customized right you need the resource needs some customized uh, the checkers to see the resource is working so there is a uh, output in your template and the output in your template will make sure you grab the output of the resource that you can customize it and see the exactly the, re the information you want it you wanted to see so you can check the exact exactly what the resource uh, resource uh, attribute you wanted and cr and see if the resource is uh, uh, executed by the by you by your uh, ideally yes so let's answer your questions Sort of, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Don't worry. We we'll, uh, we can um, talk about more later. Yeah, sure. I mean, I I think he was he I I could be wrong, but I think he was asking. Uh, it it's not a matter of the the stack writer checking that the resource was properly created, yes. but heat doing that itself. So I think I think you were asking about how heat implements knowing that it is able to legally traverse to the next state in the graph. Okay. So. We were talking about making it do the, like the updating, right? Okay, so when it's trying to updating there, it will make sure that the update is on the status correctly, on the correct status. Okay, so there's a, for example, if a resource created and is completed, and that's the updatable status. So what, uh, what happens when you create it, uh, when you can create it? We, we will have the triggers. We will have the re uh, update replacements there. So whatever went wrong in your update process here, we can help you to uh, to using the old template and to uh, cover your new new stake here. So uh, whatever happens when went wrong, you you will stay. Your resource will be the same, and the 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 resource will 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 not affect. Does that answer your questions? Kind of. <laughs> Don't worry, we can talk about it later, shall we? Okay. I can probably give you a better answer to that. It's, um, basically, it depends on the resource type. So, um, like for some resources, you um, it will do the open state call and that will say success, it's done, and then you can go straight to done. Um, for something like a Nova server, um, it has to poll it until it goes to um, active or whatever. Um, and for something like a, a software deployment, um, it waits for the signal back from the software deployment to to um, move it to complete yes. state. Yes. Does that answer the question? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. Here's a.
Zen here. He's a very uh, senior developer in the Heat team. Okay, so uh, no other questions here? Because we we're run I think we're running out of time here. <laughs> nope. Okay, then that's it. Thank you everybody to show me in the session here. Wish you have a great session. <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.